In my mind, there are simply two kinds of hypothermia that we need to be aware of when we're in the field. One is severe and one is mild. So what's the difference and, and why does it matter? Well, it matters because that for mild hypothermia, the treatment is simple. In fact, you want the treatment? Here it is. Everything your mother taught you to do when people get cold is fine. Just do whatever your mother taught you. So that means if you want to give somebody some hot chocolate, give them hot chocolate. You want to put them in a hot tub. You want to set them down next to a fire. Whatever. It doesn't matter. You're not going to kill them. So just do whatever you need to do. The problem is with severe hypothermia. And a lot of people get the two entities confused. So with mild hypothermia, all of our organ systems compensate pretty well. So our liver works well, our heart works well, our lungs work well, our brains work well, everything continues to work pretty well. The problem is with severe hypothermia, where all of our organ systems begin to decompensate. And the biggest problem is the hypothermic heart, which has all sorts of trouble. And in fact, uh, a friend of mine used to say the hypothermic heart is like a mouse trap waiting to, and that is fibrillation. And ventricular fibrillation is not a good thing. The heart just looks like a bunch of worms are crawling around in it, and there's no purposeful contraction. So the problem with the hypothermic heart is blood is cold, it's more viscous. We third space, meaning blood goes to places that it shouldn't. And uh, contractility goes down, stroke volume goes down, heart rate goes down. The product of those two things is cardiac output is reduced. And the actual conduction fibers of the heart and the myocardium itself, the heart muscle, cools to a point where it's not very effective. And what this results in is all sorts of cardiac issues. So how do you tell the difference between a severe hypothermic patient and mild? Well, a patient that has severe hypothermia will be out to lunch. So the patient that's shivering and saying, man, I'm really cold, that patient is mildly hypothermic. Now as a guide, I take those patients seriously. I worked as a river guide for many years and a patient that's shivering one moment, 30 minutes later, can be in deep trouble. So I take a shivering patient in the wilderness seriously, but a patient that's looking at you and talking coherently and shivering is not severely hypothermic. Patients that are severely hypothermic have core temperatures below 90 degrees Fahrenheit and are typically obtunded, which is the medical term for out to lunch. And they're not going to be coherent or they're going to be unresponsive.